So this is something that I've been thinking about for a while now, especially since there's been discussion about the differences in IQ across the demographics. Today, we are going to be talking about IQ, its history, and the various IQ tests available to you to take today. Because believe it or not, there are a few, depending on your age and such. Um, this will most likely be an ongoing series because this is there. there is so much to talk about with this subject. Honestly, like I, I'm making an entire video just on the history alone, let alone studies and criticisms that I could bring up, theories, alternative hypotheses, just all of this jazz. The, the simple fact of the matter is that I don't have enough storage with my current equipment set up to actually record a video of that magnitude longer than like 40 minutes, which is definitely would be. And since there is so much to go over when talking about IQ, it makes sense to split it up into small bite-sized parts so that I don't oversaturate your head spaghetti with facts and info and statistics and hullabaloo and all manner of shenanigans. It's not going to be every single week though. I can tell you that because while these videos are fun to make, they are also extremely intense in terms of research. Just the nature of the beast, I guess. So, thus, on with the intro. Now, I'm a student of psychology. It's one of my areas of study, along with computer science, and yes, I'm aware that's a soft science, like flaccid penis soft, but sue me. But if we're talking about IQ, then what better way to analyze that subject than from the lens of the very branch of science that invented the concept of measuring intelligence? psychology. What I'm saying is, I am an intellectual, a YouTube scientist. So let's get on with the history. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. Oh, you can. Yes, I can. Oh, you can. Yes, I can. Oh, you can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Measuring human intelligence stems back to the mid-1800s, where Paul Broca and Sir Francis Galton thought to measure the size of the human skull to determine a person's level of intelligence. Tell me everything you know. I want to know everything. I want to know. Later, using introspection, or one's ability to reflect, it was proposed as a good method of measuring one's intelligence. This was proposed by William Wundt if I'm saying that right. Hopefully. Who knows? I don't. Of course, both of these methods have been deemed obsolete and are no longer used to measure intelligence. Later, in 1904, Alfred Binet and Theodore Simon were tasked by the French Ministry of Education to develop a method of measuring intelligence to determine which students were mentally retarded and which ones were normal but lazy. You went full retard, man. Never go for retard. Thus, we have the first iteration of the IQ test, the Simon Binet scale. The test was designed to measure the intelligence of children, specifically, and thus the test format is as follow. In 1905, one was to reply to an abstract question, a repetition of three figures, or immediate repetition of figures, definitions of abstract terms, verbal definitions of known objects, resemblances of several known objects given from memory. In 1908, it was revised, as these things are, to be unfinished pictures, comprehension questions, definitions of similar objects, and making change from 20 sauce, or a, I guess a French currency. I have no idea. So later on in 1916, Louis Terman of Stanford University is the man accredited with the creation of the Stanford Binet Intelligence Test, which, after five separate revisions over the years, had come to be the modern standard for measuring intelligence quotients, or IQ. The fifth edition of the Stanford Binet Intelligence Scale is based on a schooling process to assess intelligence using five factors knowledge, quantitative reasoning, visual spatial process, working memory, and fluid reasoning. However, another American scientist by the name of David Weschler, who was rather Dissatisfied with the way intelligence was being measured and the limitations of the Stanford Binet model, he decided to make his own, and hence in 1955 he published his own version of the test. Actually, three versions. Well, later on it was three versions, but he did publish three versions. One for adults, one for children, and one for preschoolers. Preschoolers, you ask? Preschoolers are an intelligent? Well, 
Now, all of these have since been modified in some form or fashion, of course, because everyone has an opinion and everyone thinks that they know better than the last person who had an idea, such as the nature of science. I have no qualms with that, of course, but it's something to consider. So the Walschler Preschool and Primary Scale of Intelligence, or PSI, was designed for children ages two years and six months to seven years of age, at least the current one is. It consists of 14 subsets, those being block design, information, matrix reasoning, bug search, picture memory, similarities, picture concepts, cancellation, zoo locations, object assembly, vocabulary, animal coding, comprehensive, representative, uh, respective vocabulary, and picture, pic, pic, picture naming english motherfucker do you speak it yes english man am i right <laughs> it's like two in the morning i'm very tired anyway next we move on to the Weschler intelligence scale for children or whisk it was designed for children ages 6 to 16 and it takes about 45 to 65 minutes it measures five primary index scores that consist of verbal comprehension, visual spatial, fluid reasoning, working memory, and processing speed. And lastly, the Weschler Adult Intelligence Scale, or WAYS, WISE, was designed to measure intelligence and go figure, adults and older ad adolescents. It measures verbal comprehension, perceptual reasoning, working memory, and processing speeds. This method of testing and scoring nowadays has become the standard for IQ testing. Intelligence testing, at least. And that is where we leave off this video on the history until current year 2018, because, and I'm sure it's become very clear to you now, intelligence testing has been perpetually in flux the entire time that the concept has even existed. Everyone has their own opinion on how it should work, how it could do better, I have my own theories myself, and I will be sharing with you them later on in this series that I am putting on. Granted, there are also a few criticisms to be aware of when addressing IQ and utilizing it within the framework of research and what have you other frameworks. They will also be addressed in this ongoing series. Remains the question as to why I am doing this. Well, seeing as it's become so popular to cite IQ on YouTube nowadays as a measure of differences between people, I thought it would be a good time to bring up certain criticisms, inconvenient truths, and facts left out that you might want to consider as well when formulating your overall conclusions for yourself, as we're so fond of doing.